About a year and a half ago, I made a video about over 50 console compatible ROM hacks that you can play on EverDrives and other flashcards. And in that year and a half, the ROM hacking community has been truly amazing. So in this video, we're going to check out over 30 more ROM hacks that work on actual console. We're going to start this video by looking at the Banjo-Kazooie hacks. Just over a year ago, Mark Kirkle released Banjo-Kazooie The Jiggies of Time. This ROM hack is incredibly huge. It contains pretty much the entirety of Ocarina of Time. In my playthrough, it took me over 25 hours to complete the game. It's legitimately a whole new Nintendo 64 game experience, and I honestly could not recommend this ROM hack enough if you're looking for a full game. This next hack, also made by Mark Kirkle, is a Halloween and Christmas themed hack. This is The Nightmare Before Christmas. So this hack is obviously based off The Nightmare Before Christmas by Tim Burton. One of my favorite parts of this hack is this part here where they're able to replicate the iconic scene. This hack contains a couple levels and is pretty fun with good platforming segments. It would be perfect for the holidays. So this hack isn't technically released yet. There's a demo called Banjo-Kazooie Staying at Home which has 10 different worlds that you can play right now. I'm going to edit this specific part out of the video when this game actually comes out. This is because this game is so close to releasing and when this game releases, I want people to know that it's out. This is Banjo-Kazooie Nostalgia 64, also made by Mark Kirko. This is just an incredible hack. It contains so many nostalgia-themed levels from different Nintendo 64 games. It's crazy how much they got jam-packed into this one ROM hack. Another cool thing, Mark Kirko started working on this hack in March of 2020 when the pandemic happened, and he initially called the hack Banjo-Kazooie Staying at Home. He would release an update to this hack around every month just to encourage people to stay at home and play this game. I have 10 videos on my channel already about this single hack, and it's just so cool going to these worlds that you recognize from your childhood, but playing them as Banjo-Kazooie. Now for a Banjo-Kazooie and Animal Crossing hack, this is Banjo-Kazooie New Horizons made by by 9 and it puts Banjo-Kazooie in the world of Animal Crossing. I love the textures in this hack specifically, it has such an Animal Crossing vibe and would probably take the average person around an hour and a half to beat. Next up, let's look at some Legend of Zelda hacks for Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask. Both of these games have great console compatible randomizers. The first randomizer that I tried was the Majora's Mask randomizer. The Majora's Mask randomizer is definitely one of my favorite ROM hacks of all time. I made a whole video essay about why this ROM hack is truly amazing. How these randomizers work is they randomize all the items. With these random items, you'll have to do a lot of things out of order. You really have to be creative sometimes to progress, and it makes for a really fun new challenge, and it makes it seem like you're experiencing the game almost for the first time again. Now saying that, I was a little bit skeptical even trying the Ocarina of Time randomizer. This is because I don't know the game that well, but when I tried it, I was absolutely astonished at how much I liked it. I ended up doing two streams of this randomizer, and both of them were both over 11 hours long, so I had a lot of fun with it. One thing that the Majora's Mask randomizer has that the Ocarina of Time randomizer doesn't, is random music from different games. So it's pretty cool going around and hearing themes from other iconic games. The Majora's Mask randomizer has crashed on me a couple times, but that was on earlier builds, so maybe those are fixed, but the Ocarina of Time randomizer was completely stable on console and seemed to have no issues at all. If you're wondering which one of these randomizers to pick, I would suggest pick the randomizer for the game you prefer more. If you're a Majora's Mask person, I would recommend playing Majora's Mask randomizer first, if you're an Ocarina of Time person, I'd obviously recommend playing Ocarina of Time first. They are both great experiences though, so I'd really recommend playing both of them. If you're playing a randomizer for the first time, I would highly, highly recommend using a tracker while you play. I like using Emo Tracker. It literally tells you every single thing you can do in the game with your current items that you have. Then once you get those done, you can check them off. It makes it a lot easier to find heart pieces or even rupee chests, which could now be crucial items. The rest of these hacks are for Ocarina of Time. This is The Missing Link made by Case, CDI Fails, and Zell. This hack takes place in between Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask, hence the name. One of my favorite features of this hack is they brought back the bunny hood from Majora's Mask. 
This hack also just seems so official also, it just really seems like Nintendo made it. It takes around 4 hours to beat, so if you're looking for an extra Zelda experience, this might be the one for you. Next is Star Fox 64 Survival. So this is actually a ROM hack for Ocarina of Time where you get to play as Fox McCloud. It's pretty much a firefight mode for Ocarina of Time, we have to go through many rounds, and you have upgrades that you can buy also. Now for The Legend of Peach by Melon Speedruns. This is a really cool demo at the moment, of pretty much Link in Super Mario 64. They changed all the textures so it would fit Ocarina of Time better, and it really feels like Link belongs in this world. Right now, the only level that it contains is Bobon Battlefield. It really is a surreal experience. Right now for a game that wasn't featured in the last video, Paper Mario. First up is Paper Mario The Black Pit, made by L. Dexter, and this hack was inspired by the Pit of 100 Trials from Thousand Year Door. I've streamed this game many times, I have over 30 hours on it, and I have had just so much fun with it. You have different pits you can go in, different difficulties you can choose, and so many unlockables, including unlockable costumes. If you're a fan of the original Paper Mario and the Pit of 100 Trials, this hack would be just perfect for you. Next is Bowser's Dark Story, made by Monster Mods. So in this mod, you get to play through the original Paper Mario, but as Bowser. They reskinned everything, and it looks just absolutely great. This is just a demo right now, but I cannot wait for the final release of this mod. Next is another new game that wasn't featured in the last video, Donkey Kong 64. This first mod is Donkey Kong 64 Conquest, made by Glorious Liar. This is a fun, challenging mod that adds five new levels, one for each Kong. Each of these levels corresponds to the Kong's moveset. They couldn't quite make custom levels yet, so they had to use previous levels and add in objects, but seeing this as the first hack ever makes me very optimistic about what's to come in Donkey Kong 64's hacking future. Next is the Donkey Kong 64 Randomizer, made by Tudos and Balam. This hack has been out for a while, but recently it just got updated to be console compatible. And this hack randomizes all the loading zones, has a bunch of quality of life improvements, and there's tons of settings that you can do to have a total custom experience. And for another new game that wasn't featured in the last video, Kirby 64 and the Crystal Shard. First is Kirby in Bobomb Battlefield, made by Jesus Yoshi 54 It's pretty surreal seeing Kirby going around Bobomb Battlefield, and the level's pretty short, but it is very impressive though. The next hack is Kirby 64 Wispy Trials. Made by the same author, this is just a fun little challenging hack with these custom 3 levels. Now let's check out some Mario Kart 64 hacks. And oh boy, since the last video, there has been a ton of great hacks out. First one is Mario Kart Amped Up, made by Litronom. This hack adds a bunch of new options and a mode for collecting coins. It also has 12 brand new tracks, which include Ancient Lake, Mario Circuit, Smari Beach, Calamari Canyon, Sandy Slide, Memorial World Raceway, Yoshi's Riverbed, Hazy Maze Cave, Green Greens, Secret Slide, and Mario Circuit 3 from Super Mario Kart. All the new tracks are so cool and I really recommend trying this one out. Next, made by the same author, is the Mario Kart 64 Stomper mod. This mod changes the gameplay completely. Instead of trying to complete laps, your goal is to crush every other opponent and each CC difficulty makes the opponents faster and smaller, so this is a really challenging, fun new way to experience Mario Kart 64. Next up is just a single track hack. This is Hyrule Filled in Mario Kart, and this was made by Litronom and by Mark Kirko. And this is the same Hyrule Filled that Mark Kirko made for Banjo-Kazooie The Jiggies of Time. But this track in particular just looks amazing, has an 8 red coin mode included, and has just fantastic music, so I think it's definitely still worth putting on this list. Next is Overcart 64, made by Dead Hamster. And Dead Hamster actually made the Mario Kart 64 editor too, so none of these ROM hacks would even be possible if it wasn't for him. This mod offers so many extra features, and it also features 24 new courses. This is definitely the biggest Mario Kart 64 ROM hack out there. Some of my personal favorite courses include Peach's Castle, The Bomb Battlefield, Boo's Mansion, Toad Town Sewers, Lethal Lava Land, Luigi's Mansion, Aztec Temple, Lon Lon Ranch, Emerald Hill Zone, Deku Forest, and Banjo's Mountain. Next up, Super Smash Bros. 
Now for probably my personal favorite hack on this entire list, Smash Remix. This was included in the previous video, but since the last video there has been so many updates so I feel like it can be on both lists. This version adds Wario, Lucas, Bowser, Wolf, and Conker all into the game. It also adds so many more stages and so many more options. This is a must play game right here. Next up is an unofficial update to Smash Remix of Slippy in Smash 64. This hack was made by Frey and Soap. Although this is an unofficial update, I feel like it's definitely still worth mentioning because Slippy has a bunch of really cool custom moves and a lot of work was put into Slippy. Now for two Sonic themed stage hacks for Smash Bros, both made by Own Soldier. First is the Sonic 1 mod. This mod adds in a bunch of stages from Sonic 1 into Smash 64. And then there's the Sonic 2 mod, which adds a bunch of stages from, you guessed it, Sonic 2 into Smash 64. If you like Sonic and Smash, this is definitely the mod for you. Next is the Smash 64 skin mod pack made by Lewis10010. So these are technically custom characters. These characters share the same moveset as previous characters, but it adds in Geno, Conker, Rayman, King Didi, Sonic, Banjo, and Goku. So it's just pretty cool being able to play as these custom characters. And now lastly, but definitely not least, is the Super Mario 64 hacks. And it is honestly amazing how many console compatible Super Mario 64 hacks were released in this last year and a half. This will probably take up over half the video, so that's why I saved this for last. Now for a return to Yoshi Land by Case. This hack is absolutely fantastic. With so much custom coding in it, one of my favorite things is the new star selection menu for each course, just how colorful and vibrant it is. And it runs pretty much flawlessly too since it was made with console in mind, so Kays went above and beyond with this one here. It's just a demo right now, but I honestly cannot wait for the new version to come out. Also made by Kays, this is Mario 64 Chaos Edition. This ROM hack has been around for a while, but just recently in version 3.0, they updated it to be console compatible also. And version 3.0 contains a bunch of new great features too. So for those of you that have never heard of this game, this game throws random game shark codes and other things at you constantly. This makes for such a challenge and such a unique experience every time. It is so much fun to play. Next is Mario and Yoshi 64, also made by Kays. This hack adds Yoshi to every single stage in Super Mario 64, and it's fun to finally be able to play the game with Yoshi, because in my opinion, this should have been the 120 star reward all along. So it's nice to finally be able to use Yoshi in all these levels. If you're thinking about replaying the game on a bit of a twist, this is definitely a pretty good hack to choose. Next is Super Mario Sapphire, and this hack was originally released way back in December 2017, but when it was released it wasn't console compatible, but recently Kays went and updated the hack to make it console compatible. This is one of the classic Super Mario 64 hacks, and any fan of the original game should definitely check this one out. Have you ever wanted to play Mario 64, but with a press of the button you can flip Gravity 180? Well, then this is the hack for you. This is Anti-Gravity in Super Mario 64, made by Arthurtily. It's really cool being able to stand on any ceiling in the game, or being able to get anywhere really fast. I did a video where I did a quick, like, 70 star playthrough, and I had a lot of fun with it. Definitely recommend this one if you plan on replaying Super Mario 64, it's definitely a pretty cool way to do it. Now for Mario and Luigi's Duel Adventure made by Rianu, and this hack was made specifically for the Mario Jams Duality competition, and ended up taking an impressive second place. It's pretty short, but it contains some really unique 2D segments, and you can tell a lot of time went into this for such a short hack. Next hack is also made by Rianu, and this is Terrytown 64. This hack was made for the Evolution Mario Jams competition, and ended up taking second place also. This hack uses the new lighting engine made by WiseGuy, and this hack looks absolutely beautiful. This hack is also based off of Terrytown from Breath of the Wild. And right now, this is just a demo, but it'd be really cool to get a full release of this hack one day. This is Mario's Vacation Course 64, also made by Rianu, and this hack won first place in the 30 Star Scuttle competition. This hack is based off Bowser's Fury, and is so much fun, it is so open world, it's ridiculous. I've never seen a Mario 64 hack this open world before. It has such amazing music, 
And one of the coolest things is that when you start the game, you can't even jump. So as you collect stars, you learn all of Mario's abilities back. The fact that this can run on console is absolutely amazing, and Rianu has been updating this game non-stop too. So this one is definitely one of the most impressive ROM hacks I've ever played, and I can't recommend this one enough. Next is Treble in Paradise, made by the Cozies and Rianu. And this hack was made for Simple Flip's music hacking competition. And this hack ended up taking 9th place in the competition. The cool thing about this hack is it starts out with no music, but throughout the game you collect three musical instruments. For every musical instrument you collect, the music becomes fuller and fuller. So it actually adds that instrument to the soundtrack. Next is Mario Gets DMCA'd on Twitch64, made by Fazana. And this hack was made for Simple Flip's music hack competition and ended up placing 4th place. This hack contains one of the funniest opening cutscenes I've ever seen and it contains so much custom coding and so much cool stuff. This is definitely one of the most impressive console compatible hacks I've ever seen. And there's just so much stuff with it, it's so funny. When you start out in the house, it literally feels like a different game, like an old PC game where you're interacting around with objects and stuff. The music in this hack is just truly amazing too. This is one of those hacks that when you play, you really can't believe that it's actually on console. Next is Lucy's Levitation, made by the Cozies. And this hack was made for the Mario Jam's duality competition and ended up placing 4th place. This hack is really cool because it contains so much custom coding and so many unique mechanics. It really makes you think about what you can do with Mario 64 ROM hacks. This is Evo Q made by Team Cornersoft, and this hack was made for the Evolutions Mario Jam competition and ended up taking third place. This is probably the easiest ROM hack I ever played, but that's not a bad thing. It's more showing off these three really cool dioramas, which shows the evolution of the planet. And if you look into the lore of this hack, it actually has a pretty good message. Next is Tribal Tropics made by Aglabs, and this hack took first place in the Mario Jam's Evolution competition. As you collect stars in this game, the world and structures evolve around you. But one of my favorite parts about it is that there's actually 17 stars to collect, and it's pretty open world, so it definitely has a Mario Odyssey vibe. Next is Bowser Simulator made by Kalkwak, and this was made for the Bowser Fight Scuttle competition and ended up placing third place. This is a really cool hack that lets you take control of Bowser. The way the game controls makes it really feel like you're controlling Bowser. And this is just a demo right now, so a more complete version should be coming in the future. This is The Legend of Mario Star Sealed Castle made by WiseGuy. And this hack was made for Simple Flip Zelda hacking competition and ended up taking 5th place. This hack is a mix of Mario 64, Paper Mario, and The Legend of Zelda. And this trio mix is honestly so cool. It took me well over 4 hours to complete this hack because it has a pretty ranked difficulty. I had a really hard time on the final boss. But saying that, I would really recommend this one, especially if you're into Paper Mario and The Legend of Zelda also. This is Mario 64 Sonic Edition Plus made by Thoughts and Game Bun. This hack is really cool because it lets you play as Sonic the Hedgehog and you have a ton of Sonic's moves, and all the enemies are reskinned too. And you can just tell like a lot of time and effort went into this one. If you're thinking about playing through Mario 64 again, this would definitely be a pretty cool way. Next up is the October Project, made by I Don't Program in C++. This mod contains five beta-inspired levels and the beta castle grounds. It has some pretty unique cool sound effects, and it removes some of the moves too, so it definitely has a very rank beta vibe. Next up is Flappy Bird 64, made by Someone2639, and this hack is actually made entirely in the Super Mario 64 engine. Because it's kind of crazy, because somebody already made Flappy Bird for the Nintendo 64, which is considered a homebrew game, so that couldn't make this list, but the fact that hackers know the Mario 64 engine so well that they can just program other games onto it is incredibly impressive, so this one's definitely a cool one to have on your flashcard. Now for Dory's Treasure Hunt, made by JesusYoshi54. And this one specifically uses the brand new text editor for Mario 64, so this hack is very story based. It's almost a mix of an RPG and a platformer. If you're looking for a hack with humor and personality, this is definitely a really good choice. Now for Super Mario 64 and the Missing Stars. This hack was originally released back in April of 2009 by Frobber. 
This was the first major Super Mario 64 hack that was ever released. But when this hack came out, it wasn't console compatible. But recently, David S. came and edited the game, so now it's console compatible. For the time, this hack is really impressive. It contains a day-night cycle, a really great difficulty level. It's really cool looking at this hack to see how ROM hacking was 12 years ago. This is 24 hour hack made by Dinvik, and this hack was obviously made in less than 24 hours. And for a hack that was made in less than 24 hours, it has 4 levels and a whole secret area. The beginning of the hack is fairly easy, but the difficulty definitely gets ramped up towards the end, so this is definitely a fun one to play. Now for Christmas Dream 64, made by LuigiMan04. When I booted up this hack for the first time, I had some troubles with the flickering border, but I was able to get rid of it by just loading up another ROM hack, restarting my EverDrive, then playing this one. This is a Christmas themed hack with some really nice aesthetics and pretty good game design. It's only one level, so it's a pretty short hack, but it's definitely a good hack to play in the holiday season. Alright, and that's it for this video here. I just kind of want to give my thoughts about this because I honestly cannot believe how many ROM hacks came out in this past year and a half. My previous video had 54 ROM hacks, and that was pretty much from 2010 to 2020 in 10 years. And now in a year and a half, I was able to make a video with 46. Like, that's honestly insane. Even last year, custom Mario Kart tracks weren't really a thing. The Donkey Kong 64 hacking community was so much smaller, and now we have grand hacks like Donkey Kong 64 Conquest. Same with the Paper Mario scene, like there's some great console compatible hacks out there now, even with the Kirby scene too. Just incredible how many hacks came out in this last year and a half. And thank you guys so much for checking out this video, and thanks to all the creators who made these hacks. I'll have all the download links in the description down below, so definitely check that out and follow some of their channels too. But if you guys like this video, if you could leave a like or maybe consider subscribing, I'd really appreciate it. These videos take me a lot of time, like this one probably took me at least like 40-50 hours. If you haven't seen the first video, I recommend checking it out, I'll just have it up here. Thanks again for watching, hope you guys all have a fantastic day here.